we always wondered if we are alone in the whole universe. For the last seven decades, it became one of the most important questions for astronomists. They try to catch signals through radio and research space with the help of spacecraft. Of course, the most advanced search with today's technology is possible in our home, the solar system. And although during these years we haven't found anything that confirmed the existence of life on other planets, we managed to research some space objects that can actually be home to extraterrestrial life. And today, we would like to share some mind-blowing facts about them. Join us in the Search for Extraterrestrial Civilizations, Part 2. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you want to see another video from this series. There are definitely some objects in the solar system with conditions close to Earth's. As we know, each of the giant planets has numerous moons. Only Jupiter has 79 of them, and these objects attract the attention of many scientists. Biologists think that one of the moons, or, well, even a few of them, can have conditions for life. So let's get to know them. The solar system has some small ocean planets. One of them is Europa, the satellite of Jupiter. It's approximately 4.5 billion years old, about the same age as the planet around which it orbits. Also, it's the smallest one of the Galilean satellites, which are called that in the name of their discoverer, Galileo Galilei, who first saw them in December 1609. The diameter of the Europa is slightly more than 3,000 kilometers, so it's smaller than the moon, but larger than Pluto. The average distance from Europa to the Sun is 780 million kilometers, and to Jupiter, 666,000 kilometers. It always faces its planet with only one side, just like our moon. The duration of a European day is approximately 3.5 times that of a day on Earth. The conditions of the surface give no hope that there can be any kind of life the satellite moves inside the radiation belts of Jupiter, which are very powerful. But that's not all. There has been some interesting data obtained by the Galileo probe, which explored the Jupiterian system from 1995 to 2003. According to that, under the layer of ice that covers Europa, there is a deep ocean of salt water. Okay, but why are we sure it's salty? Well, Europa has a magnetic field. In this case, only salt water can be the conductor of electricity. Also, with the help of spectral analysis, scientists managed to find sodium chloride on the surface of Europa. Table salt almost entirely consists of it. It's also the main component of sea salt. All of this data suggests that Europa's oceans may be similar to those on Earth. The depth of this ocean, together with the layer of surface ice, can reach from 80 to 170 kilometers. If we took 100 kilometers as the satellite ocean's average depth and collected all the water on Europa in the ball, then the radius of this ball would be 877 kilometers. Moreover, there is more water on Europa than on all the Earth's oceans combined. Although our oceans are vast, they're not so deep, about four kilometers on average. The main source of heat on Europa is tidal heating, a deformation under the influence of the planet's gravity. It's powerful enough to keep the ocean in a liquid state. As you know, living organisms feel good in the subglacial lakes of Antarctica. Therefore, nothing prevents them to do the same in Europa. The Galileo probe showed strange pits and domes on the surface, so it's possible that the ice layer of the satellite cracks due to heat from below. Long, linear cracks are often only one to two kilometers wide, but can stretch thousands of kilometers across Europa's surface. Some of these have developed into 100 meters high ridges, while others diverged into wide bands with several other fractures. But how can we get to the ocean? The ice layer of Europa is around 20 to 30 kilometers. 
We still don't have any technology that can drill that. But some scientists suggested that since the ice is cracking, then maybe the water comes out to the surface itself. And they were right. The Hubble Space Telescope has spotted some powerful water geysers there. Unfortunately, in the Jupiter system, there wasn't any probe at that time that could study everything. But Europa remains one of the most attractive places for the extraterrestrial life search. The second giant planet of our solar system is Saturn. It also has many satellites, but Enceladus is the one that gets most of the attention. It is one of the smallest moons of Saturn with a regular spherical shape, but it's the largest among inner satellites. Its distance from Saturn is 237,000 kilometers. A flyby around it takes 33 hours for Enceladus. And just like Europa and our moon, it also faces its planet with one side. Enceladus is very small. The average radius of the satellite is only 0.04 of the Earth's. Also, it's covered in ice. When the Cassini spacecraft flew to the night side of Enceladus, it saw streams of water that hit directly into space from the cracks. No doubt, there was liquid water under the ice. Cassini flew right through these emissions. It examined these pieces of ice and proved that it is salt water with minerals. There is a hint that there are black smokers at the bottom of this ocean, which are throwing out mineral-rich water. And as we know, liquid water is one of the main conditions for life. Anyway, today we are talking not just about the search for life, but also about the search for intelligent extraterrestrial life. In this case, it's quite difficult to imagine that some kind of civilization could live under the ice. But perhaps there are some microorganisms. Although, let's not forget that nature is richer than we can imagine. And it works in magical ways. Now let's talk about another interesting satellite of Saturn, Titan. It was called that because it's quite huge. More precisely, 1.5 times bigger than the Moon. It can be called a full-fledged planet, although a small one. Titan has a dense atmosphere, which is very similar to Earth's. But there is no oxygen, and only nitrogen atmosphere by 95%. The rest is mainly methane. The force of gravity is seven times less than on Earth. So the scientists even managed to send a space probe there. It was called the Huygens, which was part of the Cassini. Dropping by parachute, it photographed the surface of Titan. If you compare these photos from an altitude of about 10 kilometers and photos of the terrestrial Namib Desert in South Africa, you will see the same dunes. But there was an even more interesting photograph that was transmitted by this probe, where you can see a riverbed and clouds. And from what are exactly these clouds on a planet where the average temperature is about minus 180 degrees Celsius? Certainly not from water, they are from methane. Here, it plays the role of water. Titan has methane rains and methane rivers. Of course, due to these conditions, the existence of life seems impossible on the surface of the satellite. But calculations show that under the surface, where it's warmer, life can exist. But the most interesting thing is that on the surface of Titan, there are seas and lakes from liquid hydrocarbons. Moreover, biologists suggest that some living structures could develop in it. But this is still only a hypothesis for now. Anyway, what about the search for extraterrestrial intelligent civilizations? At the end of the 50s, we started to think that our civilization was developed enough for contact with extraterrestrial civilizations. Then, in 1959, physicists realized that our radio engineering is actually at a very high level. Gigantic antennas were needed to communicate with far-flung probes. At that moment, 
This was the biggest reflector that was capable of transmitting radio messages directionally. It could also receive very weak signals coming from space. Two American physicists, Cuccioni and Philip Morrison, published a short note about that in the Nature magazine. If another star on the planet had the same radio receivers and the same radio transmitters as ours, then radio communication would be possible. We could establish the exchange of messages. Also, it was necessary to decide on several key things. The frequency needed to look for radio signals from space, the right direction for the antenna, and the form of the received signals. The first question was resolved pretty quickly. Space is filled with hydrogen. It's almost the only substance that can be found everywhere. Hydrogen has a 21 centimeter long line of radiation, and this is a natural landmark that could understand any civilization that started to explore space. On a 21 centimeter wave, the whole universe makes noise. The first person who tuned the radio to this wave was Frank Drake. He directed it to the nearest stars that were similar to our sun. And how did that experiment go? We will tell you about it in the next video of our Search for Extraterrestrial Civilization series. Subscribe and hit the like button.